Hey everyone, it's Kaylee here for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me for another soapy video. Today I am going to be making chocolate and amber, which is a brambleberry fragrance which I get here from Aussie Soap Supplies. It has got notes of lavender, tangerine, dark chocolate and amber, and it does have a massive 6.8% vanillin in it. So I know that this soap is going to go brown over time, so I'm just going to make a brown soap. So let's dive straight into this one. So in my bucket here, I have my oils, which are at room temperature. We are sitting at about 25 or 26 degrees today. And I am going to pour my lye water into here. I'm going to mix it up and then I'm going to split it out for two different colors. actually taken my stick blender apart because as I mentioned in my last video I'm pretty sure it's on its last legs and every time I undo it I just feel it come apart just that little bit more so I'm just going to leave that on there because my bucket's so heavy I know that doesn't generally topple over. In the jug here what I've got in this little pot if I can get it open there I have got about a tablespoon of cacao powder and it's an organic powder that I've got so I'm just going to add that straight in there as my colorant for that one and then um, because this is just a chocolatey kind of soap I have some chocolate Mediterranean clay I'm going to add some into this um, oil here I'm going to see what colors I end up with if I want this a little bit darker, I do have some mocha mica to add into it as well. So we'll just see how we go. Okay, so I'm really happy with the color that one's come out, but this one looks a bit too coffee for my liking, so I'm going to add just a bit of titanium dioxide in here. It's still very coffee looking, but it's a much um, better contrast between the two colors here. So I'll just get my stick blender all cleaned off here, and then we will get to adding the fragrance and pouring. <music> is smelling amazing I don't know if it's the fact that I've put that cacao powder in that I'm just thinking chocolate or what it is I <laughs> it is just smelling really really good the um, the absolute shame of it is I know that all the chocolate in the fridge at the moment is chocolate that I can't eat so I don't know if this is gonna mean a trip down to the shops or not but we'll see what happens when we get this one poured so I'm going to go and get my mold I'm also gonna go and get my hanger as well okay so I have got my mold here this fragrance oil is playing beautifully it's really thin this soap out which is kind of also a little bit of a problem because I wanted to do a nice high top, but we'll, we'll just work with what we've got for now. So we'll get that filled, it's about halfway full there, and then I'm going to drop swell this lighter one through. in there I may actually end up with some little samples because I've got other things I need to do in here as well so I don't want to fill it up too much what I am going to do I have got my hanger which is simply a coat hanger out of the wardrobe and I've just bent it into shape and um, that is all I use as my um, sort of hanger it is the right sort of width to get some beautiful sort of swirls I can see I have a piece of what's almost like a piece of string I don't know where that's come from anyway we've caught that one in time so that is just simply a hanger from out of the wardrobe and it didn't really cost me anything it gives me beautiful swells each time 
Um, so next thing I'm actually going to drop in here, I wanted to do it on a soap a long time ago and I just completely forgot to do it. What I've got here is some clear melt and pour, which I have put in some opulence mica. Um, it's kind of a yellowy, goldy kind of orangey gold, I'd say. And what I want to do is just kind of hopefully drop it into here and it will hopefully look like bits of amber. Now I do also want to keep just a little bit for the top. I am really really hoping that is going to drop on down and look like pieces of amber throughout the soap. I am just going to give that bit a little bit of a helping hand to sink it down. But I'm not going to play with it any more than that because I don't want to ruin it either. Pop that in the sink for cleaning and now it is time to get these buckets scraped out and piled on the top. But what I'm going to do rather than just spooning each of the individual colours out, I am going to basically do a in the pot swirl over here and then I will scrape it out on top of the soap and that's just so I don't end up with um, big lumps of colour on the top it will still look like it is nicely swirled. is now actually firm enough to do anything. I'm not so much after a, a real pattern here. I just want it to have some curly tops like you would find on those really nice Swiss and Belgian chocolates and those really nice handmade chocolates that you, you get where they have that sort of real swirly peak on the top of them. Now if you are new around here and you haven't seen any of my previous videos, I really should, should explain why, um, what I meant by there is no chocolate in the house that I can eat. That is because I found out a little while ago that I am actually allergic to a protein called casin and it's found in all dairy product, particularly in cow's milk. So. That is why I, there is no chocolate in the house for me to eat because, well, I actually I make a point of not buying the dark chocolate to go in the house because if it's in the house, I just eat it. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's actually quite good. It means that I'm purposely not eating stuff that I shouldn't be eating. So that's really not that bad an allergy to have. So that is looking like a really nice bar of chocolate there. It's smelling like a really nice bar of chocolate too. Just to finish it off, I have got, I'm actually going to take my gloves off for this because I've just got a feeling the gloves are going to be um, in the way very, very messy. In this container, I have some organic cacao nibs or um, little, little yeah, cacao pieces really and all I'm going to do is sprinkle those on the top of the soap here. We'll add a little bit of exfoliation on the top of this soap but not so much that it's going to be scratchy. It is just really to give that sort of chocolate um, sort of feel to the soap. That piece feels a bit big so we won't put that on there and that's why I actually took my gloves off as well so I can actually get a feel for the bits that are falling through my fingers to go on the top here because I really don't want them to be too scratchy um, but it will add a little bit of aesthetics to the soap when you go to use it. Right and then just to finish the top of this soap off I am going to use the rest of this melt and pour here and just drizzle it across the top just to really tie in that amber look from the middle of the soap and bring it to the top here. So just going to put a nice zigzag pattern across the top there. I'm missing just a little bit so I'm going to go back over here so that each and every bar have got a little bit of that amber drizzle. And now just to make sure that that all stays nice I'm going to give it a quick spray with some of the 70% rubbing alcohol. It doesn't always keep my soda ash at bay but it really does help 
um, to reduce the amount that it does. I have tried not spraying as well and I do get a lot more so um, unfortunately something I have learned to live with but I do have that steam out to get any soda ash off if we do get it. So that is chocolate and amber. I'm going to leave it set up overnight and then I am going to come back tomorrow and we will see what we've got on the inside and see if putting that melt and pour as a drop swirl really does work. So here is chocolate and amber. I'm going to be calling it ambered chocolate when I label this one up. It is smelling absolutely amazing. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking, but I'm hoping also that it will go just that little bit darker over the next couple of weeks as it cures. If you follow along with me on Instagram, I will actually post pictures of this when it does cure so you can see just how dark it actually goes. So let's get this one cut open and we will see if we have got any of those sort of amber drop swirls in there that I am hoping to get. So I am going to go quite slowly through this, keeping in mind I have got that melt and pour in the middle of this soap so that we don't end up with any broken wires as we go through. It is quite firm and I'm almost through and almost there it goes so I've just seen the end of that and oh wow wait until you see this one let me grab a piece from out the middle that is my chocolate amber I am so pleased with how that has all swelled together and you can see that melt and pour where it has just dropped and left that sort of amberish sort of glow there it's probably a little bit hard to pick up there with the light shining on it but in real life that is just absolutely amazing around those sort of drop swirls I have got um, they do look like glycerin rivers but they kind of really highlight where those swirls are and they they just that's just really pretty to me I don't really quite know how to explain that it's like giving it an almost shadow behind them and that must be some of that um, titanium dioxide that I added in to that um, that one color there I can't remember now which one I did it in <laughs> I'll have to go back through the video and see but I am so pleased with how the inside of this has come together that piece is really nice it really does look like this a chunk of amber just stuck there in the middle the camera may not pick it up it is quite because it's the clear melt and pour it is quite translucent there so it does look like this that piece of amberish stone stuck in the middle of the soap I am so super pleased with how this one has come together and I do have enough oil left that I can actually make another bar of this I'm also going to be very interested to see what actually happens with that cocoa powder over time. It's the first time I've ever used cocoa powder or cacao powder in my um, colorants and also to see what that clay adds to the soap as well when I use it. So I hope you have enjoyed watching how I make my chocolate and amber or what I will be calling amber chocolate soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you do have any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And if you are new around here and you haven't yet subscribed, why not hit that subscribe button and the little bell. I do try and bring out at least a weekly video and I also try and bring out some behind the scenes videos as well. So I hope you have enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for all of your support. And until the next video, I hope you have a great one. Bye.